Imagine you're an invader trying to get into Mont Orgai Castle. Let's see how easy it would be. Before you've even reached the castle, there would have been a moat and a ditch to stop your invasion. If you did manage to get across, you still have to get through the first gate. But look out, Harleston's tower is guarding the entrance. There are arrow loops for soldiers to fire down on any intruders. Can you spot the secret door into Harleston's tower? Now you have to be extra careful on the narrow path surrounded by the high castle walls and the battlements. Oh no, you've reached the second gate. This entrance would have had a drawbridge, portcullis and a large wooden beam to block your way. This gate was originally just a tower and is the type of castle defence which would have once had a murder hole. On top of the second gate sits an impressive weapon called a springold, which would have shot large quarrels at the attacking soldiers. You'd have to be incredibly sneaky not to have been spotted sailing over from France, which limits the element of surprise. If you successfully pass through the second gate and all of its perils, you enter the lower ward. In the past, people would be here working and tending to animals. From the lower ward, you can gaze across the open sea and easily spot invaders travelling by boat. The castle continues up to the main living area, called the Keep, passing the Cornish Bastion, which was built when cannons and guns started being used. Another great place to defend the castle from. Well done for getting this far, but getting further into the castle is going to prove even more difficult. Up the steps, the third gate awaits, with another portcullis. Mont Orgai is such a well-designed medieval castle that no invader has ever got further than this gate. Bertrand du Guesclin, the famous French knight, managed to lay siege to the castle and got through the first two gates, but he couldn't get past this one. Now let's imagine that we're defending and living in the castle. Going up the steps, you get to yet another gate. This fourth gate is a tricky one, as it has a right-angled turn, which would have made it even more difficult for an invading force to break through. Look above the gate and you'll see some coats of arms. You can see more places where defenders of the castle would have been if there was an invasion. The middle ward is another place where people living in the castle would gather. Maybe it was an area where soldiers would practice their skills. Governors of the island lived in the castle. The large knight on horseback is a famous knight and a governor of Jersey called Sir Hugh Calverley. There has to be a place to store things in a castle, and the covered area here was a cellar. Above it was a chapel. The roof was knocked down a long time ago. The castle was used as a prison, but it doesn't have dungeons to put prisoners in. It has a room which has very steep steps going down to it. Building a castle would have taken a very long time and you can see evidence of how the castle walls were put up with wooden scaffolding. The holes in the wall are putlog holes. Around the corner going up these steps, you'll find the thing that makes it a castle, the well. Without a well providing water, you wouldn't be able to survive any sort of siege. Next, you'll get to the part of the castle which is where people lived. There are two halls, one from medieval times and one from Tudor times. This shows us that the castle had lots of pieces added onto it over hundreds of years, a bit like adding another room onto your house. These rooms had kitchens and cellars and people ate and slept here. Finally, if you can get to the very top of the castle, you have a fantastic view all around the area. So you can keep watch for any possible invaders. Come and explore Mont Orgai Castle and discover it for yourself. <laughs>